So Maggie did an introduction. I won't add much. Um, one thing I did want to highlight is in the office hours portion, which is in the second hour, I mean, Maggie emphasized me, but one of the great things that happens during office hours is that uh, you guys help each other out too. Like it, it's, I don't know, it, it has been really interactive and, and uh, people who are attendees have often made great contributions and helped other people solve problems. So, um, I don't remember if you mentioned, but the most exciting thing I wanna highlight about Two Octobers is we became a certified B Corporation um, last month, which means that we have uh, met the highest verified, verifiable standards of social and environmental accountability. So uh, big, big milestone for us. All right, so today I am going to, here are the things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover. First, I wanna get into why stories and a little bit about stories. I mean, you're here, so you probably don't need to be sold on why storytelling is valuable. Um, but I do wanna talk a little bit about what storytelling means and then get into some concepts about storytelling with data and storytelling with Data Studio in particular. It, to illustrate the concepts, I'm gonna use examples from Data Studio, which in part three, I'll, I wanna go through sort of the mechanics of how I did some of those things. So if you're somebody who is here for ideas and um, doesn't necessarily uh, get excited by the technical details, the first part's gonna be great. Uh, the third part's gonna be great for those of you that love the technical details. Um, hopefully most of you get excited by both. I wanna pause briefly and just open it up a little bit. I'm gonna, uh, the first part is a lot of me talking, um, which makes me uncomfortable. Uh, so I want to, I want to, I don't know, open it up a little bit and, and ask questions in chat along the way. Um, in the office hours, uh, please uh, turn off, I mean, turn on, turn on sound and, and, and ask questions. But, but during the presentation portion of it, ask them in chat and, and Maggie will, will butt in at the right moments and let me know. Okay, so why stories? Uh, this quote is from Brene Brown's now legendary TED Talk, The Power of Vulnerability. And I, well, I love it. I mean, <laughs> there's a few things about it that I love. I mean, it's very Brene Brown that it's like maybe stories. You know, if it was um, Tony Robbins, he'd be like, stories are. He wouldn't be like, maybe. But um, <laughs> she's, she's more uh, my cup of tea. Um, and I love this, just the idea that, that stories are just data with a soul. I mean, obviously as sort of data oriented people, um, that's pleasing to, to us. What I, I was thinking about this and, and I was like, okay, so there, ergo, if, if you're not telling a story and you're presenting data, then it's, you, you have no soul, you're, you're presenting no soul and, and what better exemplifies the lack of a soul than, than Voldemort. So, so from now on, anytime you look at a dashboard and you haven't thought about telling a story, um, just remind yourself of, of Voldemort. Um, all right, so a little story. <laughs> I, we've sort of the idea of of storytelling with data is something that we talk about a lot at Two Octobers and we have for a long time. It, I got renewed enthusiasm for it when I was listening to a podcast and to do a little scene setting. Um, I'm a long distance runner and I was running along the beach in Florida, as a matter of fact. And uh, I was listening to this uh, interview with the economist Robert Schiller and he told this story, and actually he told a story about a story is what he did, is he told the story about a napkin, and, and the napkin is, uh, was, has on it the drawing uh, of the economist Art Laffer 
who in the 1970s had what is sort of now a, a infamous or, or famous meeting, depending on who you talk to, with, uh, and, and at the meeting were uh, Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld, and, and he was explaining this economic concept, which became known as the Laffer Curve. And he, and he drew the explanation on, the menu, uh, on his napkin in the restaurant, and, and it must have been a nice restaurant because it's a cloth napkin. But <laughs> so, so like now I'm telling a story about a story about a story, because here I was listening to this podcast of Robert Schiller ta talking about the story of Art Laffer communicating the idea of the Laffer curve. And the idea of the Laffer curve is that sort of naively, uh, one would, well, maybe not naively, but, but a reasonable conjecture would be that if the government wants to raise more money, the government should raise taxes. Um, so if, if the government wants to make more money next year, increase taxes, then that should do it. And, and his, the, the concept that he was trying to get across was, well, the problem is raising taxes dis disincentivizes companies from making money and people from making money. Because there is a point, if you imagine that at 100% tax rate, why would you work? There'd be no reason to. So um, the, and, and so what he tried to do is say, okay, so the idea is that there's this curve and, and somewhere in the middle is where right, tax revenue is maximized. It's not at 100% of income gets taxed. Tax. It's obviously not at zero, so it's somewhere in the middle. And and he had an argument for why tax rates should go down to actually increase tax revenue. The, Robert Schiller told this story because this is not Art Laffer's idea. This was actually John Maynard Keynes's idea, arguably, or somebody before that. But the the fact that he drew it on a napkin in front of these inf influential people and they walked away with their minds blown changed economic history because they went on to influence other people and, and both work in different capacities in the Reagan administration. And this story of the Laffer curve and the idea that if we lower taxes, we increase revenue affected tax policy um, really um, since, since then. So, uh, so I love this idea and I was, it got me excited and it got me excited about the um, just like, I guess, what, what do we mean when we talk about uh, telling stories with data? Because I think, I mean, this is a topic that actually Maggie and I have explored a lot. And, and, and a lot of what we have talked about is just presenting data in a way that people understand what you're trying to communicate. And I think that that is a really important part of it, um, but that's not all of it. So, uh, and, and by the way, I do have, uh, first of all, this deck will be sent out afterwards and I have links to everything I'm mentioning in here. So um, the story, I mean, I highly recommend Robert Schiller's book, uh, Narrative Economics, which includes that story among others. And, and his basic thesis is that uh, stories actually have more influence on um, macro and microeconomics uh, than um, most people had any idea of. So I'm gonna go through a few principles of, of telling stories. Uh, I do wanna start with, what, okay, so what do we mean by uh, telling a story with data? And so I like the I mean, Robert Schiller's example, um, but I'm not inherently a storyteller. And, and it turns out that his example actually has um, a lot of these ingredients in it, but, but I didn't really know what, like. I didn't know anything about storytelling, um, honestly. Um, I, I remembered like learning about the seven basic plots, which is just this, somebody had put together this idea that every story ever told fits one of the seven basic plots and everything. So I did my own research and I, I landed on a couple of things, which I love. And I wanna share those here because they're really super useful to me. And like Stephen King will teach you how to write a novel and, and he's pretty, actually pretty good at it but I don't want to write a novel um, and you come to the wrong place if you want to write a novel. But uh, the, the, um, what Kendra Hall put together is this list of things, which is actually much more relevant to what we do as analysts and, and builders of dashboards um, and digital marketers, which is what are the core ingredients for 
getting an idea across with a story. So not like a story that's 800 pages long, um, but like uh, the, the anecdote of, of the napkin that Robert Schiller told. Um, and the things that she identified, and, and she did a ton of research, actually largely on advertising, of like advertiser, advertisements that stuck um, and what was it about them that stuck in people's memories? Um, and, and so the things that she came up with, and I, I, I think I, I recommend that you sort of keep this in mind when you're thinking about presenting data or telling any kind of story, because um, I'm finding it very useful. So one is identifiable characters that what we care most about is people. So have a person, and it could be you, um, as a character that the person, um, that your, your audience, can latch on to because that's much more interesting than um, a thing like a website. Um, maybe it's about a website, but try to include um, people with emotion. So um, again, just in terms of, of, of getting somebody's attention, getting them to appreciate an idea, Maynard, John Maynard Keynes had described the Laffer curve and it was lost in history. Um, and then this great anecdote about a, a person and a significant moment um, of discovery, this aha moment for, for Donald Rumsfeld and, and Dick Cheney um, of, of the, the concept. Um, and then specific details, which uh, if we're involved in building uh, dashboards, I would argue we err maybe too much on the side of, but in any case, it's good to know that an important ingredient of a story is specific details. So, I love that model. I'm going to share one other way of looking at it. This is from Gaping Void, who's, uh, I mean, it's now an organization, but, but um, I became a Gaping Void fan when all, he was just a guy who tweeted out um, pictures of, of business cards that he'd drawn on the back of. And, and now he's sort of well known as this visual storyteller. And this, uh, so, so here what he's trying to do is show sort of the, the, um, range from data to information to knowledge, insight, wisdom, and impact. And I'm going to refer back to this, but but I think the what what we tend to err on the side of is dashboards as information. And really, what we as analytical people, as as analysts within an organization, should be trying to do is provide insight. Uh, I'm going to leave wisdom and impact out of it because really, my point of view would be that we provide insight which over time creates wisdom in an organization and which helps the organization have impact, whatever, you know, it might be impacting sales, but it also might be impacting um, uh, whatever, uh, the environment in a positive way. So, so um, luckily <laughs> our job ends on the, on the inside end of the spectrum, at least when it comes to a dashboard, hopefully, um, outside of dashboards, we can have impact. So <clears throat> for principles, number one, uh, and, and this is, I, I think this is all, I mean, this is often true in any kind of com communication, but why should your audience care? And, and I guess one thing I want to point out is, is I'm going to be using examples. These are actual, th th this is actually from a dashboard. And if you see anything in here and you're like, huh, that's interesting. Um, how can I do that in my dashboard? I'm going to open up the actual dashboard um, later on and please shoot questions uh, or, or suggestions to um, for ways to do what we're talking about. So start with why. I, so I have an anecdote about this that, that um, uh, was my kind of aha moment, I guess. <laughs> is is uh, we recently um, hired Noah Lerner, who maybe he's here, maybe he's not. He's led a couple of workshops. And, and prior Ooh. to that, there he is. Uh, so prior to that, Noah was, we were, um, uh, was actually a client of Two Octobers and, and Noah had his own agency. And, and I, I had the benefit of being on a couple of calls with Noah and his clients and in conversations with Noah um, and clients. And, and what, I, this was so obvious and cool and, and not my style, but, but Noah would lead with like, like our goal is to make you money. And, 
and the, there's, there's a really simple formula, which is how we do it. And, and the formula is that if we can get clicks, if we can convert those clicks to sales, and we can increase your average order value, we're making you more money. And if we can do any one of those things, we're making you more money. So that's everything we do is focused around making you more money by increasing clicks, increasing conversions, and increasing average order value. And like, like, so Neil is more of an intuitive stor storyteller than I am because what he's done is like, like there's such a big why in that and like here's the ingredients in a way that his audience gets excited, right? Because now they're um, like, if I'm a business owner, like I don't really want you going down the path of like new ad formats and Facebook. I want to know that you're trying to make me money. And if I think you're trying to make me money, I'm on your side. And I mean, I think one of the things that I've found as a very data oriented person is people are always sort of skeptical when sort of techie data geeks are start going on about techie data geeky stuff. Like it's they're sort of holding you at arm's length. Like, yeah, not really sure what you're trying to say here. Not really sure if I should buy it. But if you believe that what I'm trying to do is to make you money, like all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm on your team. How can we, how can we help do this? You know, how can we do this better together? Um, so now you, you really engage the person uh, and gotten them excited. So one of the tips I wanna highlight here is that most dashboards I look at start with a bunch of graphs and there's no text at all. Well, you're not gonna explain why in a graph. You're gonna explain how principles, you're gonna support why, but graphs, no matter how pretty, there's no why in them. Words are good for why. I'll, I'll share another technique in a minute that's good for why. But um, so think about on your, on your dashboard actually starting to incorporate more words about why they should care, what you're really trying to do. Okay, so next is like, you can tell the best story in the world, but, but if it's on the subject matter that your audience really doesn't care about, you haven't accomplished much and it's gonna be a lot harder to gain traction with your story. If it's the best story in the world, you'll probably still get their attention. But think about like, what do they care about? I mean, this is something that Noah was doing. He's talking to a business owner and he's saying, I'm gonna make you more money. Well, that's what they wanna hear. Again, back to the sort of Facebook ad formats, most, small business owners don't, you know, large business owners don't, don't really care about Facebook ad format. So, so really think about who it is that you're speaking to, what they care about. One of the things that we do is upfront, we, in our intake process, do Q and A to get at what are the metrics that they care about? How do they think about them? What's worked in the past? What hasn't worked in the past? So that we can be addressing those things as we build dashboards and, and have conversations. A really great tool to use also is to incorporate a feedback form into your dashboards. Um, and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute, but it's, it's just a simple example. It's just a link to a, a Google form, just like, how can we make it better? And you might think, oh, well, in the next call, um, they'll bring it up if they really care. But it, man, that might be true, but it's probably not true. I mean, they're probably gonna forget. It's not that big a deal. and. If, if you don't invite feedback, a lot of times you won't get it. So um, give them an easy way to, to, to give you feedback. Uh, all right, so then <laughs> principle three, be clear, concise, and credible. So this is an example of a dashboard uh, from towarddatascience.com. And I'm like, <laughs> sorry, towarddatascience.com, but this dashboard sucks. Like, like this is the homepage. <laughs> Like what, like what, I don't need, I mean, I don't, like is everything below the word YouTube about YouTube? I guess it is. Like what's the, I, honestly, I can't make, I mean, I could make guesses at this dashboard, but that's the best that I could do. So um, <clears throat> right now they're presenting information. What we wanna do is Organize things in a way, include words, include annotations. Uh, so to, to make it easy for the person at the other end to understand what you're talking about, because like you may be looking at charts from Google Analytics all day long, but they're not. So they don't actually necessarily know what is a session, for example. 
what is conversion rate? Or if you say CVR, which sometimes people in the industry use as an acronym for conversion rate, like seriously, you, you better send somebody to wake your, your audience up because um, you've, you've just lost them. So, so be clear, concise, and credible. A trick for credibility, I mean something, um, one of the things that, that so uh, Maggie mentioned that I, I teach at, at uh, University of Denver, the Denver College, College of Business. And, and part of, one of the things that I teach is uh, analytics and, and one of the projects that I have my students do is an analytics analysis. And I've had, so it's been a really, really great experience for me because I've let, read at this point probably two to 300 analyses done by students exploring different topics um, in the con really by using data mostly extracted from Google Analytics. And one of the things that I noticed is that like, like a basic way to make Nico happy is to include a reference to a, an external source of information that validates your point. So for example, to say like your, you know, your click-through rate is 80% and that's bad, um, okay. But if you say your click-through rate is 80% and a year ago it was 70%, a year ago before that it was 60% and I looked at competitive metrics and in general in your industry it's like 50%, well, now I feel urgency. I'm like, okay, this is a problem. I get it. Um, whereas when you just say it's 80%, that's bad. Um, okay. Says who, right? Like, I, I don't necessarily know that. So, so think about working in external references that help your audience understand the data and, and believe what you're talking about. And Nico, you meant bounce rate, not click through rate, right? Oh, I did mean bounce rate. Was like, I mean, the things I run are always 80% click through rate. So <laughs> good. Maggie will be sharing some of her tips on increasing <laughs> click through rate later. And of course, we're going to ask her to verify that she actually does that. Totally. So, all right. So, all right. So now we've shifted from information to knowledge. Uh, we're being clear, concise, and, and credible. Um, one of the things that I would I do want to mention about concise is that when you build a dashboard in data studio, it's just going to pull in like variable names uh, from the data sources that you're pulling data from. It's going to create chart names that barely mean anything. Um, but you can replace all of those things. And I highly encourage that you do so um, because a lot of times they really don't mean anything to the audience that you're talking about. So not just like text that explains stuff, but also just think about labels um, that, that help people understand what they're looking at. All right, now this is another thing that I've learned from looking at hundreds of analytics analyses is that, um, I don't know why, like, like I guess, I don't know. It's just like, I think we, I don't, you know, we evolved from creatures that were really good at, at um, finding, hunting and gathering and, and not necessarily great at data analysis, but the, the people intuitively, when they present data, don't provide any context to help their audience understand what that data means. So like as an example, I've got the, this, this little scorecard widget and, and one just says page views 5,244. And then the other one has a comparison metric. So all of a sudden, like now I'm like, oh, it's up 14%, that's great but also like page views as a single word. I don't know if that's in the dictionary. I don't think it is, but it's not plain language that your audience necessarily understands. And a lot of times, like I pulled this from a dashboard that actually was reporting on blog page views, but the, the scorecard metric doesn't specify that. That's just a filter in Data Studio. So it's the, the scorecard would just say page views. Um, so, Make sure that you communicate exactly what it is. And then uh, I think it's often helpful to uh, say what the, the date range of it is. And again, this could depend on the sophistication of your audience. If you're giving them a date control and they're changing it a lot, um, then maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that. But, um, but if you're providing stuff where they can't actually change the date range, um, tell them what it is. Uh, and usually you're doing that for a reason. Um, and it's important that they know. 
and, and going back to the Nope dashboard, I found that uh, was not at all obvious because not, if I'm not used to looking at dashboards, I don't know if everything on here is according to this metric, but I don't even necessarily know to look for it. And uh, Nico, quick question. So back to the yup, nope, the, that slide. So um, in terms of customizing labels, so I think you're planning on showing how you can do that, right? Later on, yep. we had a question come through. Okay, great. But then um, more specifically, um, yeah, so the question is for the customiz customization of labels, is that data studio report or template specific, or can you change the label at the source too? So no answered all three, which I think means yes to all, right? It depends what you mean by the source. You can change it in the data source within Data Studio. Um, but in like Google Analytics, you typically, if that's considered the source, you wouldn't necessarily change anything in there, although you might be able to with some sort of custom field, right? Not that I don't know. I mean, you could create a custom field that just pulls from another field, but Right. I, don't, I don't think you would want to in any case. In Google Analytics, the people that are in Google Analytics are more sophisticated typically. And if you change the name of page views, you're going to annoy your coworkers. So, um, so I would say, as Noah said, you could change it in the, in the, the data source in um, Data Studio. For me, it's super easy to do it at the widget level, and that's usually what I would do. Uh, OK. so. Then the last thing, um, last principle, so present your data in a narrative that ends in an insight. And, and I think like going back to um, the stories that stick formula of um, to have identifiable characters, um, the, uh, let's see, specific details, genuine emotion, um, and the, the um, significant moment. So the best way to do that is actually with bona fide narrative and, and putting text on, 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 on um, your, your data studio dashboard is a good way to do that. But the other thing that I like to do is actually embed a video in the dashboard explaining the dashboard and, and like one use of this is here's how to use this dashboard, but another use of it would be, um, I, I, was, I tried to play the video, but the video is not embedded in the presentation, it's embedded in the dashboard. So I'll do that in a minute. But um, so, so actually include a video that demonstrates analysis um, and walks through, like here are insights from your uh, dashboard for this month. Like we noticed that, you know, we started targeting, um, well, here, let me, let me do it following the, the stories that stick formula. So, so here's the bad way to do it. We were able to increase ROAS by 35% last month. Boring. But what if I say, well, my colleague Karen, who oversees the social campaign, noticed that even though there aren't a lot of, of male visitors over 45, they actually converted a much higher rate um, than other visitors in the website. So she created audiences to target those people and, and actually was able to raise ROAS um, last month by 35%, right? Like, like there's a person with an insight in, in a moment, like it's things that, that your audience is gonna be interested in hearing and feel like there's real people working hard for them. Okay. To recap, give your audience a reason to care, understand who your audience is, be clear, concise, and credible. Always, always, always provide context. Always, just always, I can't stress this too much. <laughs> like, think about what it means and, and how to convey what it's gonna mean to your audience because they don't necessarily know, for example, the difference between click-through rate and bounce rate. Um, and then provide a narrative that ends in an insight. And I'm not saying you have to always record video, uh, but it's a great tool. And one of the things that I've discovered is that 
I could record a 10 minute video of me walking through a client's dashboard and actually save myself an hour by not having to write it down, not having to prepare for a meeting. Like, I mean, still meetings with people are good, but, but the amount of information I could convey that way by just bringing it up on my screen, recording it. Um, and if you don't do that right now, the tool that I started using to do that, it's called Snagit and it's wonderful and not very expensive. Um, and, and then actually embed the video of you explaining things about their dashboard to them. Okay. Uh, so as promised, that was a lot of me talking. Um, I, I want to walk through how I did some of the things that I, uh, I described, but I guess um, I wanted to leave in a little bit of a break here and I don't know if there are any questions backlog or if you've been hanging on to any questions, I want to get into the specifics of how to do it. One of the things that I'm curious about is sort of level of expertise, like, like um, maybe in chat, could you sort of say, um, I don't know, beginning intermediate or expert with Data Studio, if some of you could volunteer that, that would be helpful to me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause for a minute. And then is there anything, so I'll talk about um, changing labels. Uh, the, um, is there anything else that you wanna make sure that I cover? Um, maybe enter that here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, switch over to my dashboard. Okay, so we've got, I mean, I'm not surprised. Some beginners, some intermediate. Um, apparently Noah is a little bit more of an expert than Ray. Um, I'll let you guys sort that out. Um, so, so here's uh, one, um, and, and again, I have links at the end, but, but uh, here's a trick that I got from, um, Mehdi Ojeda, who's a um, French data studio expert, blogs about data studio. Um, and there's actually a, a couple of tricks from, from him in here, but this one I love. So, okay. Um, so on the, one of his tricks is to have text and actually use a drop, drop down panel to control text so that you can actually create kind of an interactive, like here are the ideas like highlights from different channels that I can switch around. And, and what he's doing here, and what I should do is, is let's see if I, can, if I can do this effectively. Uh, I'm going to... I want to have the view version and the edit version both up at the same time. Okay, so here's the view version. 
Here's the edit version. So, so this here is actually just a table, an inserted table, and, and it's pulling from this Google Sheet, and it has descriptions over here on the right, and then it has this pick list of picking which description you want. It's got this row thing just so that it orders correctly. And then, so in Data Studio, I've got that, and all it's doing is pulling one row of the description field. And then I have this drop down control that's picking the channel. Um, and this is where it's using the uh, row as the metric to sort by so that they show up in the right order. So then when in the dashboard, I change this selection, then essentially it acts like a filter on my other, my other control over here. So um, the, this guy right here, uh, now it's acting, acting as a filter on the select row of this, this um, table. So including text that way, if you've tried including text in a Data Studio dashboard, it can be really challenging. Um, they don't give you a lot of tools for that. You can embed a Google Doc, but uh, I've found that to be, it's, um, let's just say it doesn't feel like they're done yet. Like it, it the formatting changes depending on browsers. Uh, it's really inconsistent, the results that that produces. So there's one cool trick. Um, the other thing that I got from um, Mehdi Udija is, Udija, um, is uh, if you've played around with trying to create links in, in Data Studio, it's a giant pain in the butt. So, so if you notice, like here, I've got this link in text. Um, and, and if you've done a lot of building of dashboards and you don't know this trick, you'll be like, wait, how did he do that? Well, let me show you. So I love, this is the coolest data studio hack I've seen in a while. So this is a hyperlink and, and it's just a bunch of eights. Um, and, and that links to the video and the overflow setting is set to hidden um, so that it, it, it just lays over harmlessly over the other text. And then he figured out <laughs> that if you change the background transparency to 100%, which is basically zero, um, visibility to 0%, it actually doesn't just change the background, it changes the text too. So the text is invisible um, so, so we have that invisible hyperlink that is laid over um, the, uh, the actual text. And I just underlined it so people would know that it was a link that they could click on. The other thing that um, this other problem this solves is if you are, if you've played around with trying to add links in Data Studio um, and uh, so a, a really annoying problem is that when I do this and let's say that I want to say this is for the last page, then it reformats it uh, in this dark blue color. And I don't understand, like I've occasionally gotten that dark blue color to change back. Like I can actually edit it. But ordinarily, and watch, this will be like the one time that it works. Yeah, all right. So that's really hit or miss for me. Like there have been times when I've spent like so long just trying to get the text to change color and it won't change color. So if you find yourself in that cir circumstance, uh, the, that little trick of the invisible link is super helpful. But uh, in any case, always helpful for uh, this, this walkthrough. Uh, let's switch over to the, the <clears throat> so changing labels. The, so it's really simple. So all you do is on the metric here, you can just put in whatever you want. So um,
And, you know, like I said, I, I like this better probably than at the data source level. Um, just because uh, you might be using the same data source in other cases and you might want to use different labels. I, I really like to, I mean, you'll see me, like, like I don't accept any of the text that Data Studio provides by default. Like this is text that I put in here, I just got rid of. Like I don't, I just, I find that it's a much it can be much clearer if I have, like even if I just end up deciding, no, actually that was okay, it forces me to think through it. Um, so the other thing I want to show you here, this is, I love this. This is one of the newest features of um, the uh, Data Studio, which is this reference line. Um, and not all charts have this, but um, this is a time series chart. And if you go into style, you can add a reference line. And in this case, what I did is I, I I just said, well, I want it to be um, the average of page views, and I can pick different things if I want to there. But, but something that we've started using it for is you can actually switch it to say constant value. Um, and so what I might say is put it in here um, and say, uh, where are we at? Um, I mean, th this doesn't really make sense in, in this instance, but so I might say, call this industry average. And then you've got this little reference line in here. So you can imagine for things like bounce rate, um, page load speed, there, there are a lot of cases where you might wanna say, here it is compared to um, a, a constant number. Uh, again, love, love this feature. Like all of, I mean, let's just turn this chart from something that we understand to something that our audience can get excited about. I should point out that another thing that I've done here is to add this navigation across the bottom. And I, and I did on the, if we go back to the um, home screen. Oh, I'm on the home screen. Duh. So I explained that, that you know, I mentioned the navigation, just make it easy for people to get around. Because again, if you're not used to D Data Studio dashboards, knowing to go up here is not intuitive, I don't think. And I don't actually like it. Like, like I find it tedious myself. I really like having the navigation on here. Uh, I'll show you one thing about that. So if you look at the, these elements, um, and actually we can select them all. So, I did just right clicked on it. And um, th there's this option to make it page level or make it report level. So if, you, if there's stuff that you wanna have show up on every page of your report, uh, right click it and make it report level. And um, that's how you do it. And then if you accidentally, you realize, okay, I didn't want that on that screen. Um, I will show you one thing that I've done, uh, which is um, kind of uh, sneaky. Um, which you may have run into. So let's see, if we go to, I think this is the one. Yeah, all right, so, so we have this, this date control. And let's say that the date control, we make that um, report level. Then um, what you can do is, then you're like, well, but I don't actually want it on the, on the uh, homepage. Uh, a simple trick there is I can go and add a rectangle and then let's see, I think this is the color, and then just fill it with the color of the report. Looks like I need to. Might need to move things around a little bit. I'm still getting that shadow showing up. But so, so if there's something that you want to have on all of the pages of the report, except for like the, the first page, um, you can actually use that as a little trick to, to hide stuff. Um, so I'm going to switch back. I don't actually want that at report level, so I'm going to change that to page level. 
Nico, when you add that to every page, does it automatically sync in with all the tables, like all of the data references too? Or is that a different step? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not positive. Noah self-describes um, <laughs> third level black belt in Data Studio, do you know? Question again? If, so, if you take a date control and copy it to another tab, will all the widgets in that tab start using that date control? Yeah, I think it's at the page level. But, but if you created it on another tab and then you made it report level, would everything else automatically link up to it? Yes, should. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. You don't need to. Um, okay. So I, I think this, I, I, I mean, I, I really like doing this. I've started, um, I've started doing this a lot. I use a green screen so I can stand in front of it. I used to just record it. Okay, shut up. Bad enough. Um, so, uh, in any case, I, I, if you're interested in the green screen part of it, um, stick around and um, we will, uh, uh, we'll go over that in office hours. I think, I think those are the main things that I, I wanted to walk through. Yeah, I think that, I think that's it. Yeah, that's just a blank one. So. Okay. So that's what I have. We're gonna maybe. Um, well, actually, I do have a couple more slides at the end. Sorry, I forgot about that. First off, I'm going to. Let you know, upcoming workshops, uh, really, really exciting. Um, the, we have how to craft an audience driven SEO content strategy uh, by my colleague Yasmin Davila. And she, this is actually the second time she's done this workshop. And, and somebody who is a veteran of SEO conferences and workshops and has been at it for a long time said it was the best SEO um, presentation he'd ever seen. Uh, and I, I, I have to second that. I mean, Yasmin is so smart. It was, it was great. Um, the uh, Giving Tuesday Digital Marketing Playbook, uh, Chris Skavish is gonna be doing. This is really uh, give it, geared at nonprofits or, or organizations that are involved in Giving Tuesday, but it's mostly gonna be nonprofits um, there's going to be content in there that I think is uh, pretty unique and helpful for nonprofits. So if you're involved in any nonprofit marketing, um, please share. And then our own Maggie Castle is going to be doing digital marketing tips for the holidays coming up. Um, Noah, who's on here, I think Nikki might be on here as well, are both presenting at SearchCon. Uh, I can't keep up with Nikki. She, if you got to follow her, um, on uh, Twitter uh, and she's presenting at like 10 other things that I can't remember right now. Um, but I'm gonna give special love to SearchCon because it's a conference that um, is uh, Colorado based um, now online. So anybody anywhere can attend uh, and there's gonna be some great content. So I promised some links. You can actually see the napkin itself um, you know, someday when you feel like traveling again, you can go to Washington, D.C. and see the napkin um, and uh, other, uh, other useful links. Um, one, one that I, so I included a few things in here. Uh, I didn't talk much about, but I mentioned uh, Mehdi Ojeda, who has, like, I don't know, he might be 
I mean, he's definitely now among my top five data studio um, gurus that, that I, I follow. And that's like as of two days ago. So um, the, uh, but he has so many great tips to share. Oh, another one that I wanted to point out is, uh, this is actually a friend of Noah's, but, but I didn't, I mean, I just found this from Google searching, uh, is this data studio style guide, which is a super, um, uh, by Jordan too, which is a super helpful, just sort of here's how to structure um, things like variable names and tape connector connection names, just uh, making your life easier. And I thought it was really cool. So I wanted to share that. And uh, there's some of my info. Uh, and if you're, um, if, if you uh, want to follow, um, Mehdi Odita, who I've mentioned a number of times, um, I just gave him a shout out for that um, link hack that I thought was so cool. So um, if you do look me up on Twitter, you will see um, that's like the last thing that I did. Mostly I just respond to Noah and post pictures of bread. So my Twitter is not super interesting. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, so, all right. Uh, really, really appreciate everybody um, taking the time to be here. We're going to switch over to office hours, um, but thank you so much.